Hello everyone, um, and now comes the time that we cover the set data structure. Um, the set um, data structure is essentially um, a representation, um, a digital representation or a programming representation for the mathematical um, construct that is very well known in the world of math. Um, the set is essentially um, a data structure that does not have any repeated elements within. Uh, this is, this is a, in, a, in a very high level um, way of working with uh, data structures uh, such as sets. Um, unlike the list, the list has, you can have multiple uh, elements that are repeated. So, um, and also the set um, works exactly in a way, programmatically in a way that a list works where you can add an element, you move an element, you clear the content of the set. Um, but also it works exactly the way you also, uh, you can expect it um, to do the math operations that you usually do if you're working with a mathematical um, set. And, and these, these uh, operations could be the union and the intersection and the difference and symmetric difference and the subset and the superset and so on. Um, so now let's get started by showing how we can um, uh, construct a set, how we can create the set. I'm just going to create um, uh, a set here. I'm going to call it my set. And there is a set function here that this is going to um, um, basically give me um, a set. So this is how I can construct the set um, by launching or by um, um, constructing an empty set and passing it to the variable name here. So if I run this um, like that, it will show me that it's it's actually an empty set and I'm not sure why this is happening. Um, all right, so um, now we, if we print it like that, and it's gonna show me it's a it's an it's a set that doesn't have any elements. How do we how do we work with this set and add some elements to it? So uh, if I am going to add um, say uh, number one and um, my set, add the uh, the number two, um, my set, um, and then uh, you can also add anything else other than numbers. You can actually work with um, strings, even though, um, like that, um, two, like this. So as you can see, we were able here to pass numbers and pass some elements that are in text format. And let's see what this is going to give us. I'm just going to create um, a cell here, and I'm just going to pass the set and see what sort of um, elements that I have and clearly here you can see that the these uh, these are the elements that we actually stored inside all right now um, it seems very tedious um, to be able to work with only adding one element at a time um, so what we need to do maybe adding um, elements by bulk um, and if you remember um, working with the sets um, sorry, if you work with a list of uh, numbers, for instance, like that, um, or elements, doesn't matter, elements like that, um, oops, that's not that, how would you clear a list? So I'm just going to create a list of um, sports, um, soccer, because I'm a big soccer fan. We don't call it soccer, we call it football. Um, then maybe football, the, the way you guys, the American uh, uh, people in American culture call uh, football, football. Makes sense. And, um, and also maybe basketball, like that. Um, and then baseball. Um, I don't know if it's one word or two words, it doesn't matter. Um, you guys understand what I'm doing here. So if I just print the content of the list in one shot, then I'll see that I have a list of elements here, a list of list of sports. How do I add these elements into my set here? Suppose I want to add these elements in one shot to the set. How do I do that? Um, there is a function called update. And the update function 
text a list and you can imagine what the update function is going to do if you actually print the content of this list after you update it and then we see what's going to happen here so if we do that um, as you can see all the elements in the previous um, 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 in the, in the previous we previously added them in addition to the ones that we created for sports uh, we were able to add them here um, so all of the elements are already added um, using the add function and then eventually we also use the update function that takes a list of elements and we were able to see them here after we print them so we were successful at adding things by the bulk and I'm not sure why I, I kind of skipped um, this so now suppose I, I I don't like the idea of having the list being mixed with numbers and sports and digits and letters and words and so on uh, I don't like that idea so what I need to do maybe I need to remove some elements here um, okay well removing elements would, would probably not be so hard um, we saw previously how to remove an element from the list using the remove function perhaps perhaps um, a remove function will actually be a good thing to try and suppose I want to remove um, these guys one and two like that and I also want to remove the second element uh, to remove a second element which is element two like that and if I print the set like that I should be able to see the elements without the two elements that we just um, erased or removed previously in the, in, in the steps before, the two steps before. Okay, um, suppose I'm done experimenting with my list and I want to clear, I want to uh, get rid of everything in it. So maybe by calling the clear function like that, um, will demonstrate that I actually deleted or cleared all the elements inside and as you can see this is a clear proof that it is indeed empty all right now how do we how do we work all of that is is not really very difficult we've seen that before with the dictionary uh, dictionaries we've seen that before with the lists and nothing new here at all it's only getting exposed to the syntax the only thing that is actually new um, is is the uniqueness of the elements so maybe what we need to do uh, before moving forward to the other mathematical operations, uh, try to test um, test whether we can add um, a repeated element um, to a set. All right, so let's let's try to use the same set that we created, and if I am going to add um, baseball. Like that, um, and then I f if I print um, my underscore set, I will see that I have. <coughs> excuse me, I will see that I have um, one element here, which is the element that I just added, which is baseball. Um, suppose that I made a mistake and I decided I repeated the same thing again. And um, so I tried to add the same element that was already been added. Um, what is going to happen here? And if we um, print the list um, like that, we're still going to see a single element um, out of this. So let me see. Well, what is what is this function going to return if you add an element that is already there? Right. So now suppose I want to add another element that is not in the list. Basketball like that, and I want to print it. And as you can see, when I when I print, um, um, when I print it here, it basically doesn't. It's a function that doesn't return anything. So if I um, if I print. Uh, the, the set again one more time I will see two different elements 
which is basketball, the, the one that we just added, and the baseball that was already added previously. Okay, so let's add, let's let's work with some operations. Uh, working with the operations will be a lot more fun than these other tedious things. So working with, with operations actually require two different sets. Um, the union, if we want to calculate the union of, of, of two sets, let's see what the union uh, what the union looks like. Um, before we do a, a union, we need two different sets. So the, well, let's create a set one. And instead of making it um, empty, we can basically um, we can basically pass a list um, to the body of the function, to the uh, to the parameter of the function, and this is going to create um, a set here. And let's create another set, set two, and here I'm going to pass another list. Um, let's let's make it um, kind of um, overlap a little three and four and five and six like that and if I print set one and I print set two like that then I see the two sets that we just created okay creating the union what do you think the union is gonna give us um, let me just get rid of this so let's do a set with another set set one union set two like that and let's see what's gonna happen okay so it's given us one two three four five six one two three four five six clearly the union here excluded the repeated elements so there was there was indeed an, um, some sort of an overlap the two elements three and four here existed in there too um, so it only it only um, grabbed grabbed the elements that are not repeated so the union gets all the elements in both lists except the ones that are repeated they only list them once that is the definition of a list anyways so the union here produces um, a collection of all the items in both lists nothing is repeated all right what about the intersection the intersection is is a cool one too um, and um, I'm just uh, gonna come here like this and instead of doing the union we are going to do the intersection um, and if we do the intersection, it's going to show me the overlapping elements only because this is indeed three and four here are the only two elements overlapping um, between uh, set one and set two. Okay, so now we now we see union gets all the elements in both lists. Um, intersection gets only the elements that are overlapping in the two lists. Um, there is another interesting operation. Um, which is the difference. And what is the difference uh, of, a, of two sets? Um, well, let's let's grab these guys like that. And we are going to call the difference function as opposed to the, the, the uh, intersection function and see what sort of things we're going to get. I would imagine the difference would probably be like if we if you want to the differentiate the one to the left with the one to the right because this is the one to the left here set one is the one to the left and set two is the one to the right so we are going to show only the elements in the left hand side that don't have any overlap or don't have any um, elements in the right hand side so i would imagine that the difference if we do this right is going to give me one and two as opposed to uh, one and one and two and five six because what makes the what makes that one different is these two elements because everything else um, everything else is um, repeated so three and four is repeated and five and six are unique to set B uh, set one so one and two here is is what we actually should be expecting and indeed <coughs> all right um, I really like the idea of a difference. Um, but it, it sounds it sounds like it's it's missing something. Uh, what I what I kind of expect um, to to see um, maybe maybe 
um, also seeing the difference in the other list in the other list as well. But to be able to do that, there is actually another function called the symmetric difference. So basically, gets um, the different elements in set one and the different elements in set two, and get rid of the elements that are intersecting. So the symmetric difference here, if I um, if I do this correctly, um, let's just uh, grab the two lists again like that and then use the symmetric difference function and um, will be symmetric difference like this with, um, with an underscore that separates the two elements. So I like I said, I would imagine here that the symmetric difference would be one and two and five and six because three and four are intersecting, uh, inter intersecting and uh, they exist in the intersection and the they are common in the both in both lists so the only difference um for the two guys for the two sets is one and two and five and six if we are going to take a look at the symmetric difference and um for some reason um all right let me see um maybe i uh, because I misspelled the symmetric difference with three M's. So now we are going to see that, that the difference of, of the two lists symmetrically is one and two and five and six. This is really great. Um, and also, we um, um, the superset and the, the subset are really... Um, nothing but um, um, a smaller subset of, of a larger set. So what we need to do in, in, uh, to be able to, uh, to, to replicate or to demonstrate the superset and the subset is to create a set one like that. And um, maybe this is going to be one and two, three, four, five, like that. And then let's create another one, set two. And um, we're going to pass only um, a few elements, one, two, and three, like that. And um, let's, let's ask if, if, uh, if set two, um, if set two is subset of set one, subset here is essentially having all the elements in in, in the one set also um, available in the in the larger set but the larger set is definitely got more elements so let's just see this and if, if this is going to give us something useful this is supposed to be giving us um, a true or a false value um, and clearly here I am I'm a little rusty with the with the syntax um, let me see is subset um, subset okay all right so i made a mistake here um now i apologize i don't know why everything is beeping all at once um now we can also check if set one is a superset is super set of set two superset means has the same elements of set uh, of the other set but more um, so let's print um, some some message here and we can say is set to a subset of set one because that's what we're asking, right? Like that. We're asking here if set two is, is a subset. And then also let's ask if set one. It's similar to to uh, in a way if you can if you want to think about it. If this is a child, if set two is a child of of set one, then set one is a parent of set two. Um, that's the same, same same metaphor. It's not exactly um, the same thing, but it's a, it's a similar metaphor. Now, uh, now if if sub if set two is a subset of set one, then set one is a superset of set two. Set is set one a 
super set of set two like that and then we should be able to see that both of these guys are true um this is this is all the this is all the operations um that we um that we need to worry about and uh, next time we are going to um work with some uh, more concrete examples thanks for watching